Welcome to Mercado de Triana, the local fresh market of Triana. place in Sevilla without first learning about the history and how it's evolved to what it is today. And that's no different with Triana and the local market. Sevilla's identity is strongly linked to Triana, a soulful neighborhood on the west bank of the Guadalquivir River, whose past is littered with stories of sailors, ceramicists, matadors, and the flamenco singers and dancers. The Triana Market is located in Plaza del Altozano, next to the Triana Bridge, in the district, you guessed it, of Triana. In the lower part of the market are the remains of Castle San Jorge, the seat of the Inquisitional Court. The castle was the seat of the Inquisition from 1481, although initial construction was during the Arab era in 1171. In 1823, the market was installed on this site, popularly known as the Plaza de Abastos, or you would say in English, the market of supplies. It was affected by continuous abandonment and excessive floods by the Guadalquivir River. For the expo in Sevilla in 1992, the market was modernized. The remains of the castle were demolished. And as of most recent, in 2001, the new Triana Market was inaugurated in its traditional location. Today the market is not just a place to purchase fresh produce, meats, cheeses, spices, whatever your heart desires. It's a social destination for locals to meet up with friends, family, and to enjoy local cuisine. In my opinion, the Spanish culture revolves around two very important points, familia and comida, food. Hence why the market is so important. We found ingredients used for cooking still revolves deeply around the city's roots. For instance, they use olive oil as a way to represent the Muslim heritage and ingredients like pork lard to represent the Catholic heritage. Yeah. You can see this Arab legacy in Anis, for example, in the Anis Sea. Through food, you can learn so much about history and culture. If you ask the right questions, you can learn that roots of the past have created our future. And we learn this to be true about Sevilla. Now, many, many years ago, the land here in Sevilla was used to raise chicken and lamb. The land wasn't plentiful enough to, for livestock such as cows or pig. And additionally, pork was not something that the Muslims would consume, so it was perfect. However, during the Spanish Inquisition, the Spanish told the Muslims, you have two options. You can leave, or you can convert to Catholicism. Now, obviously, the Muslims didn't want to leave, and they didn't want to convert. They love the city. This is where their businesses were, their families, their friends. This is where they love to live. So, to trick the Spanish into thinking that they had converted, they started raising tons and tons of pig, providing lots and lots of pork. Obviously, many other things have happened since then uh, to develop the food and the culture to what it is today. But obviously, it's a very important piece and an interesting part of history. Uh, there were 10 years where people were really, 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 really poor and got nothing to eat. 
when people got nothing to eat, you eat everything. So <clears throat> vendors start to skin cats. And when you skin a cat and when you skin a rabbit, they are pretty similar. They are almost the same. They are almost the same. They are almost the same. Well, that's good to know. According to the International Olive Council, to know the history of an olive tree, you have to go back to the 12th millennium BC. However, it wasn't until 1050 BC that the olive tree found its way to Spain through the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians came from the ancient region along the eastern coast of the Mediterranean that corresponds to the modern Lebanon with adjoining parts of modern Syria and Israel. I have to be honest, I'm not really an olive fan. I just can't get over that bitter taste. But thanks for visiting Sevilla, Spain, I actually did find one that I like. I like the manzanilla one and it's delicious. It's not too bitter. It's a little fruity. It's, it's perfect. Here we are at the bean stand. I really wanted you to hear the footage of the tour guide telling us uh, about what they do to the beans and the nuts, but unfortunately, she has a really heavy Spanish accent and it's hard to hear her with all the noise around her. So I'll just explain real quickly. What they do is they deep fry the nuts and the beans and they come up with this really um, awesome treat that they add salt to. And that's what we got to taste. And it was super yummy. Um, here you have our charcuterie board. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> cool. Well, we end our tour, of course, with some beautiful moon, some exotic cheeses, and it wouldn't be Spain without the wine. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for you. If you want, you could hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, make a comment, be my friend. <laughs> anyway, until next time, get out there. There's a whole world you deserve to see. <laughs>